Cube. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Welcome back, Jeff Frick here at theCUBE. We're at Big Data Silicon Valley 2014. Uh, Santa Clara, California, just across from the uh, Santa Clara Convention Center and the Stratacon that's going on. We're over at the Hilton in the Yosemite Room. If you're close by, we invite you to stop by, take a look at theCUBE, uh, take a visit, and uh, we're happy to always see our friends come on by. We are joined in our next segment by Mark Terranzoni, the CEO at Squirrel, CUBE alumni. Mark, welcome back. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. So you just you just uh, came over from uh, from from Stratacomp. What's kind of the vibe over there? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a it's a good crew. Um, you know, combination of uh, biz dev, but a lot of end, end customers and a lot of good sessions too. We had uh, we had a talk yesterday that was very well attended also by awesome. our CTO. So awesome. So let's uh, let's just jump in. We've had Squirrel on a number of times. Sure. Why don't you give us just kind of a quick update on the company? Sure. Um, so we finished uh, finished off two two thousand thirteen. Uh, you know, had a plan on customers, had a plan on, on bookings, um, doubled the staff, uh, moved the offices, closed the Series A, so it, it was an exciting year uh, for, uh, for Squirrel, for sure. And uh, we're, uh, we're not pausing, right? We're stepping right into 2014 uh, with still, uh, you know, some pretty big uh, lofty goals ahead of us. So. Now those are great. So those are all great business metrics, which is, which is um, kind of a, another indicator where the state of this whole thing is. You know, you weren't talking about speeds and feeds or, or anything but really business metrics and, and adoption in, in the, uh, with the customers. We've got great technology. There's no question about it. But uh, you know, technology, in my pers from my perspective, is really a basis for solving problems that customers have, and that's what we're really attempting to do. So, uh, we uh, we found uh, we targeted some uh, very specific verticals: uh, banking, and financing, healthcare, and telecommunications, and uh, we were able to penetrate all those verticals uh, in 2013. So we talked a little bit before before the lights came on in terms of you know some of the customer stories that that potentially you could or couldn't share and I know you guys really spun out of NSA so it's some mm -hmm. some heavy lifting technology and and stuff that's that's often kind of kept under the covers but I still wonder without naming specific customers if you can get into some of the the use cases where people are able to do things before that they just couldn't do before or do it so much better. Yeah, I, absolutely. I'll, I'll give a couple examples of that. So um, we have uh, we have a number of customers that are looking to put together a very secure data. Store. Um, one of our major claims to fame and differentiators is our security modeling that we've built around not only Accumulo, that's the open source project that's the foundation of our technology, but uh, a lot of the tech, uh, the tech that Squirrel has put together uh, to enhance that, that security model. So uh, a number of our customers are looking to really to manage their entitlement process and they have very complex security rules and requirements. Um, we're seeing a transition from role-based security where you know it was it was really aligned to who the user is and then mapping that user to what access rights they have to more of an attribute-based you know access control where it's not only who the user is what location are they logging in from are they you know, at their home office or are they in the office um, are they uh, you know, it, what time of day is it? And uh, you know, is it a remote site? And those attributes now dictate what security policies are aligned to those people. So it's becoming much more complex, and we're really seeing, uh, we're, we're really feel like we're the leaders in that from an information management standpoint. And a lot of our customers are starting to roll out products uh, based on those requirements. Now that's interesting. So let's dig down a little deeper on, on the attribution. Is it? Is it because the same person has different rights if they're sitting at their home computer or, or, or working off their mobile, or is it because it's really more of a of a of a check and a check and balances to get more uh, attributes to verify you know who they are and what they really do have? I, I think it's a combination of both, Jeff. Um, but in some cases that, and I'll use an example, you know, maybe in the financial services market, um, some some trades just cannot be placed uh, from a broker when they're outside of the office versus inside the office. So they log in from their home computer, there's certain things that they can't do that they're able to do when they're in the office. So those, that's, that's kind of an example of the fine services aspect of it. Um, there's other cases in healthcare where if they're accessing, you know, from a remote location, you know, um, uh, personalized health records, then, you know, they really can't access them uh, from those places versus inside the firewall. So yeah, yeah, it's starting to see more and more of that for sure. 
And, and, and what's kind of the driver behind that? Is, is it the regs or is it the, the bring your own device or is it just because now they can? We, we had a guest on earlier talking about, wow, what if, what if you could do these things? How would you look at the world differently? Or is it really just because they can, now they do? I think it's a combination. The, there's enabling technology for sure. Uh, regulations are getting more stringent. I think you know some of the news stories we've all seen and read about, where you know personal information is being you know mishandled or misused, are creating a lot of concern in companies, and, and they're trying to figure out better ways to manage that and control that. Yeah, interesting. So I wonder if you can um, talk about kind of what some of the future challenges are that you guys are looking to, to take down. What are some of the next uh, hills that you're, you got your eye on? Absolutely. So you know we we think we've locked down the security aspect of it, and we're really a building an enterprise ready, you know, NoSQL data store that sits on Hadoop. And we feel that we have enough traction in the market with that story and that solution, but customers want more, right? They're, okay, great, I have all my Always data in one more, place right? and it's secure. I wanna be able to do things with that. I wanna be do, able to do things. Um, so we, we're, we're now starting to see a movement towards this um, operational analytics. Well, really it's, you know, in the old world, you know, OLAP and OLTP, you know, were separated. And now there's this combination of, you know, I'd like to be able to use this store in an operational way, but I also want to run some analytics on top of it. So we've built in some of the, those analytic capabilities. I think we'll still, we'll, we'll certainly through this year grow those capabilities. Um, we've got full text search capabilities. We've got graph search capabilities. We're building in some graph-based analytics, which are very unique and differentiated. Uh, customers are very interested in understanding, you know, what entities are in their data and what are the relationships. And those relationships are really, you know, best suited to understand in a graph model. And it gets pretty complex if we go multiple hops and multiple levels of those relationships. So those are some of the things that we're working on today. And, uh, you know, we've got a very hefty roadmap. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, I'm making a lot of investments in the engineering team, so we've, uh, I've got some announcements over the next uh, 30 days. We've brought in some, uh, some, some more senior talent that are gonna help us, uh, help us grow the technology over the next year, so stay tuned for that. I'd love to be able to talk about it today, but we're not ready to. <laughs> Can't have break, come on, we love breaking news on the right? cube. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, one of the things we're doing, I think last time I was on here, I talked about you know, maybe, uh, you know, we're big supporters of Accumulo. Uh, we have a lot of committers and contributors. Uh, we're, uh, we're working on uh, co-sponsoring an Accumulo event and would certainly love to have the Cube there as well. Excellent. And we've, uh, we've targeted June of this year and really, you know, to help get the word, about, word out about Accumulo, what, what uh, you know, attributes and differentiators it has and bringing that development community together you know, to talk about different problems that are being solved with the technology. Right. Well, it, and it's an interesting use case where you, you've got an open source kind of core, and yet you guys are super high security. You've got the whole NSA uh, roots. Talk a little bit about, because that, that seems contradictory from the outside looking in, and how you can manage both to have an open source core as well as have really a high security application. Yeah, well, so the, the, the core product was developed uh, by the NSA and was kept internal for a long time. Um, the value of having that open core for us is that you know, it's been proven. It's been running in a, you know, a pretty mission-critical environment within the NSA. I, you know, I certainly don't know how they're using it, and, and uh, most people... If you told <laughs> me, you have to shoot me, <laughs> exactly. so uh, don't tell me anything. <laughs> uh, but um, I think one of the things we do know is that you know, they, they're, uh, there's a tremendous amount of data in their back office, and they're managing things in a real-time way. And uh, this technology has been, been proven to scale uh, pretty, pretty large and, and certainly greater than most things out in the marketplace. Yeah. So we have that ability to take that open core and we've built a lot of tooling around that to make it usable in the enterprise, right? So those are, those are the you know, things that we've built today and we want to extend those capabilities in an analytic way and, and actually in, into solutions that we can drop in that customers can and utilize to solve problems you know, right. with, without a lot of heavy lifting. Now I know, you know uh, there's a lot of tenants on big data, you know, velocity, variety, veracity, value, uh, depending on who you talk to, they'll, they'll come up with a slightly different set. But I know one of the big ones is volume. And I know that you guys have some special capabilities around high volume ingest. We do. I wonder if you could speak a little bit about um, that capability, one, and two, why that's a value and how people are, are taking that, that uh, capability and putting it to good use. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, you know, our ingest rates are, are uh, this, there's been some statistics put out there, but our ingest rates are, much greater than uh, most products out in the marketplace. 
um, you know, so we were able to almost keep up and, and stream data into the system in real time way. And I think that that really is based on the technology around Accumulo and the way they built it to be able to massively ingest lots of different data, multi-structured, uh, semi-structured, um, unstructured data feeds. And then not only in some of the technology that Squirrel's built is to be able to index that on the fly as it comes in so it's available to the application real time as it comes it streams into the system. It's a unique capability. Um, it's certainly hard to do. We also um, apply these security labels on the data as it's being ingested. So you know we've got the security model applied to the data as it comes into the system and becomes available to the application in real time. So there are there are a number of uh, large customers um, in you know telecom arena is, is probably a good area for that. That the, the amount of data that they collect in from a log perspective is massive. And it's happening all day, every day, in real time. And they need to be able to store that information in a place that they can react to some you know, network outages or, or, or any particular anomalies that are happening on the network. And uh, we're, we think we have got a great solution for that. Right, but then you always move to your next point of failure, right? So now if you've got a super rapid ingest and now you've got the indexing, you're still going to be able to do something with it or else you're just building up a big store. Right, um, right. So. Yeah, and those that, those become the, those real time applications on top of the uh, on top of the data store. So, um, you know, we built a very rich uh, API on top of the system. Um, we allow uh, programmers to develop on on Java, Ruby on Rails, Python, be able to roll apps out very rapidly. And yes, and it's all about you know what type of insights the customer is looking for, what problems they're solving. So, uh, you know, we have a number of cases where. Uh, you know, customers are building their own applications. They're able to roll them out very rapidly. And one of the reasons they're able to do that is because they don't have to worry about the security model. We've, uh, we've basically taken the security model, applied it to the vault. We've integrated to all their security systems, all their access control systems, all their policy engines, all their key management systems from an encryption standpoint, and then we give them an, an auditing capability that can tie into the compliance modules. So once you've, once you've established a model that you can apply the security to the vault, the development of those applications become much more rapid because you're not worried about that very um, you know, complicated security model and what, what regulations may require you to change it in the future. Hey, Mark, just want to um, ask you a few questions around industry landscape. You guys are out there. Um, you're grinding away as a startup, always trying to innovate, and, and you know, we're in an innovator die situation. And we, at, at uh, Hadoop Summit, when we saw each other last, or the team, we saw them again last night at the Cube party. Um, a lot's going on. What, what's changed in your mind? You're out there, you're talking to customers, there's real problems being solved. What's, what's changed since Hadoop Summit last year to now uh, in your world? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think this year, I mean, a lot of people are figuring out in the last couple of years what their big data strategy is, you know, and what tools they're going to use to bring all this data together in one place. I really believe this year, and in some cases into next year, is going to be all about value of that data, creating use cases that solve real problems in real time, and in a lot of cases, create monetary value. Um, we, we've got another interesting use case in the, in the medical field. Actually, I can talk about this one because oh, uh, we, did a, we did an announcement <laughs> with the company. Um, the company's called MedYear. Um, they're a private health exchange startup. And uh, with some of the regulations out with uh, the Affordable Care Act, as we all know, we can now shop for our own uh, health care. Right? We can pick you know, different providers and we have the freedom of choice of who we want to use. One of the problems associated with that is how do I get my health records you know, together in a place where I can utilize them and move them around to whoever I need to. Well, this company, MedYear, has created an application, a cloud-based application on top of our data store, where they're basically allowing their customers to, um, to store personal health records in this, in this system and be able to parse it out to whoever, whatever providers they want to. So it's a, you know, some of these technologies, they didn't exist because the regulations didn't allow for them, mm. um, and the technology wouldn't allow for the security applications associated with them. So. Yeah, you know, one of the things I like about your company, the Squirrel guys, is, and, and, and is you guys have one of the smartest teams I've seen in the business. You guys, um, certainly on the IQ uh, depth chart is pretty deep. So it's good to see what you're working on. And uh, so I got to ask you, what are the, some of the things that, you, that you're working on that are really hard problems that you're solving with the team? Obviously, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. It's a lot of hard problems to, to go after. Uh, but in particular, you guys have a good team and you know, tend to be a good barometer, in my opinion, on some of the cutting edge issues that, that, that the large customers uh, want to solve. What, what are some of those hardest examples that you guys go going after? So, so I think you know, we, we talk a lot about the security. I think we've, we've kind of baked that model down. 
But now it's, you know, you want to apply that security into almost anything you do. So if we're including analytics, well, that security model has to be applied to the analytic layer, has to be applied to the indexing layer. There's, um, there's a lot of complications associated with that, but the good news is that was, that was really the forefront of the architecture that we des developed from the beginning. So we've, uh, we've built a lot of that implementation in, and uh, you know, we're happy to say that, it, that it, it works, and I think the challenge of the future will be around um, increasing the analytic capabilities you know, some of the graph stuff that we're doing, I think, is going to be, uh, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, on the forefront of technology. Um, I think, you know, the speeds that we're trying to accomplish it at and the performance factors that we're looking at are, are going to be, um, you know, we've got lofty goals in that area, so there will be challenges, but I, I Performance, think it, you're talking about the graph and database yeah, and Yeah, large, I mean, we've got, you know, distributed data, you know, multiple petabytes, and you want to provide, you know, analysis of that information in an instant. You know, in you know, web time. We have Emil coming on from Neo Technology. I'm going back to 90s, I mean, 2007. He and I chatted. At the time, graph databases was something like that. What? But now, essentially, distributed networks is graph. Right. So that's a really, really key area to develop on. What things are happening in that world that you can highlight for the folks who might not be following deep into the trenches of some of the data issues around, you know, the different database architectures that you guys are attacking. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, I, I think there's a couple things that are going to be interesting, right? So if you think about the store itself, uh, you know, the fundamental, you know, features we have in that store um, provide a lot of value to our customers. But then you look at it on both sides of it. You know, one of the challenges, you know, data comes in many shapes and sizes uh, and in many, in many different speeds. So what we're trying to do is make sure that we have, you know, very easy to use tools of getting that data into our system. You know, whether it's coming from you know, a, a real-time streaming engine, whether it's coming out of a data warehouse, whether it's coming uh, you know, out of uh, you know, log files uh, that are on the network. So you know, building those models to bring that data in and then having a data model that you know, solves problems for the customer in real time. Uh, one of the things that we do that I think is, is fairly unique is that uh, we build a, a real-time aggregation framework um, so as information is coming in, if you know the types of dashboards that you're looking for from a customer perspective and the types of queries you want to run, you can build that in in just time. And we'll keep those aggregates up to date as data streaming into the system. So it really becomes a powerful tool um, if you, if, for the queries that you know you're looking for. So you guys are startups. So I want to ask you the startup question. I'll see where Roman the hallways at Strata Conference. There's a lot of new names out there I've never heard of. Yeah. Um, it's like I'm not really that impressed with some of the batch of startups. Um, you guys have been out there for a while. Um, what's your take on the startup ecosystem? It's, it is not gonna, it's not going to be as greenfield as it, it used to be. You guys got in early, uh, have a good position, obviously good, good tech, good IP, and great team. But you know, for the folks entering in the market, what's your take on one the, the situation, the startup situation, and then kind of the, the competition? I mean, what, I mean it's pretty brutal. <laughs> um, I, I, it's still a noisy space, right? Um, it, there's, uh, you, you know, it's hard to find what people really do when everyone talks about solving the same problems <laughs> and the same use cases. So if I was going to give some advice to companies today, I would say that um, you find your differentiation and, you know, don't, don't you know, don't, don't do the same things, don't say the same things everyone else does because I think it gets lost in the noise. Pick something that you think you're going to be really good at and, and use that as your mantra. And what's the update on with you guys? We saw the team last night, all looking good, uh, all in, in uniform. Um, the shirts. Um, what's what's the update? Give us, uh, so give us so steps. yeah, the update is that um, we're going to continue to invest in in tech uh, in in talent on the engineering side. We know we've got a very good uh, lock on uh, some unique capabilities, and it resonates with the customers today. But our goals are very lofty, and we're going to continue to invest in engineering. We're going to continue to invest in a go-to-market strategy, and, and we're going to continue to invest in a partner strategy. So I think if we can execute on all three of those, then uh, yeah, I think 2014, similarly to 2013, will be a great year for Squirrel. Well, it's great following you guys. I love the momentum. Uh, great to see the team. Uh, what's, your, what's your success here at the show? What can you point at uh, to the folks out there, what you guys are announcing and talking about? So uh, for the show, for us, uh, I, I think you know, we're, we're always looking at you know, making sure that the relationships with our partner ecosystem are strong. We've got everyone in the room together. Um, so we have a lot of discussions there. And then you really understand you know, what the end users are looking for. So we had some really good uh, customer discussions around problems that they have and, and how we can be used to solve them. So uh, you know, I think the show's been great for us. Uh, and uh, you know it's great to be out here, and it's certainly great to be here on the cube with you guys as well. So, okay, one 
final question. Summarize for the folks out there who are watching who aren't here at the Big Data SV event and also the Strata Conference, uh, which is going across the street that we're covering. Uh, what is the moment in time right now? What's happening? What's the what's the core story right here for Big Data SV? What is the big thing that, that at this moment that that's happening? What's the big story? I think uh, you know a couple things. One is that um, you know Hadoop is certainly for real and mainstream and and being deployed you know in almost every you know corner of the world. And I think you know the the, the theme around that is okay. It's it's going to be here as a data layer. Now we got to solve problems with it. People don't want to, you know, we got two choices with the, the data that goes in there. We can have a data lake that provides value, or we can have a data landfill. And I think most customers want data lakes, so we got we to solve problems on top of that data. I mean, we like data ocean. That's what it's more like an ocean with rip currents and all kinds of so tsunamis. A of plastic things. Yeah, so, I mean, I just don't like the lake term. I don't know where that came from. Gartner, I hate data lake. It's a data ocean. Massive. Got it. Dead ocean. <laughs> icebergs <laughs> everywhere in North, North Atlantic, uh, Caribbean waters, um, and that's where you guys are sailing. Well, great to see you, uh, you guys. A squirrel Hot Startup continue to grow and add to the roster of partnerships and, and success. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Always great, great to see you guys. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back live in Silicon Valley here at the Hilton. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. We'll be right back.